VPNs, and IPsec. So we've spoken about virtual private networks before. We're going to talk about them more in detail in this particular lecture. Uh, many employees have to work in remote offices or they telecommute. And to be able to connect back to the internal network, they're going to use a VPN. These virtual private networks allow our users to securely connect to the main corporate network over an untrusted network, such as using the internet. We have two different categories of VPNs. We have our site-to-site -site and our client-to-site. Site-to-site -site is where we inter interconnect two different sites, so maybe a remote site to our corporate headquarters, for instance. And we can do this instead of having to use a leased line or a dedicated line, we can just use a local uh, connection to the internet and then use the internet as our communications path with this encryption tunnel. For client-to-site, on the other hand, it's where you actually take a client's laptop or desktop and connect back into the intranet. And this is where we have remote access for the typical telecommuter or the typical uh, employee. They connect using a VPN client on their machine, it creates a secure tunnel, and all their traffic then goes back through to the corporate network. So some examples of VPN here. Um, the site-to-site -site is on the left where you can see the entire company's branch A, B, and C are connecting back into the headquarters. So anytime that branch B, for instance, wants to go out to the internet, what's going to end up happening is they're going to send their traffic back to headquarters and then out to the internet. Uh, and that way they get the protections that the corporation has. The second one is our client to site. And in this case, we have a mobile user or a telecommuter that connects back to the headquarters. And then from there, they'll be able to go back out to the internet if they need to get to the internet. But the big benefit here is they can get access to the headquarters resources as if they were sitting inside headquarters. So they'll have access to the file shares. They'll have access to the printers and the scanners, even though they're physically not sitting there. So with our virtual private networks, we have to secure this tunnel. And the most common way we do that is with what's called IPsec. IPsec, or IP security, provides us protections for our VPN traffic by creating this encryption tunnel. It gives us confidentiality by providing data encryption. It provides us integrity by ensuring the data is not modified in, tra in transit by using hashing. And it also uses authentication to verify that the two parties, us and the headquarters, are who we say we are. So it's a very good thing for us to use uh, to give us network security. IPsec uses what's called the Internet Key Exchange, or IKE, to create the secure tunnel. IKE is, it uses encryption between two authenticated peers. And we have three different modes of internet key exchange. We have our main mode, which uses three separate exchanges. We have aggressive mode, which more quickly achieves these results using only three packets. And then we have quick mode, which negotiates the parameters of the IPsec session itself. Inside IPsec, uh, excuse me, I, inside of Ike, we have two phases, phase one and phase two. In phase one, we're going to establish a secure authenticated tunnel using these security associations. And in phase two, we're going to actually exchange the information to create that security association. So with phase one, we're going to establish our encryption tunnel uh, and our authentication protocols between the VPN endpoints. And this will create a phase one tunnel, so our initial tunnel. Phase two, we're going to end up creating a secure, uh, within this secure phase one tunnel, we're going to establish our encryption and authentication between the VPN endpoints to create the second IPsec tunnel that we're actually going to use to transmit our data. So for our transport and tunnel modes, uh, we have transport mode where we use the original IP header of the packet and it's usually used for client to site VPNs. So if I'm sitting at my home and connecting back to work, I'm going to be using transport mode more than likely. This works well because we can actually get our packet size um, sent without having to increase our packet size any. And sometimes if you increase your packet size using tunnel mode, you'll go over the maximum transmission unit and cause problems with routing. With our tunnel mode, on the other hand, we're going to encapsulate the entire packet and provide a new header. So we're going to actually encrypt the tunnel, uh, excuse me, we're going to encrypt the packet by tunneling it over. This new header is going to have a new source and destination uh, of the VPN termination device at the different site, and it's used for site to site. The way I like to think about this is if I have a letter that I'm going to send to my grandma and I send it in a standard envelope, I have my source and destination, right? I have me in, in the return address area and her in the destination area. If I use tunnel mode, I'm actually going to take that and put it inside another envelope and send it maybe to the post office in her town. When it gets there, they'll open it up and then pull out the second one, which is mine that goes to grandma's house. The reason is that way, as this stuff is transiting, uh, they cannot see the actual destination of where I'm going. They're only going to see the, the main uh, VPN head. They're not going to see the destination inside the VPN. Uh, and so it actually gives you a little more stuff. As you can see here in the, in the diagram, 
the, trans, uh, the tunnel mode does add a new header, and because of that, it does expand the size of the packet, and that could cause problems. So steps of IPsec VPN session. So first, our PC is going to send traffic to the second PC. The router is going to start by initi initiating a creation of an IPsec tunnel. Next, router 1 and router 2 are going to end up negotiating their security association, their SA, to form the phase 1 tunnel, also known as an isochemp tunnel. This phase 2 tunnel is then, the IPsec tunnel, is then going to be negotiated and set up. The tunnel is then established and the information is securely sent between PC1 and PC2. And at the end, the IPsec tunnel will be torn down. So as you can see here in step 1, I'm going to send stuff to PC2. We're going to create an association between these two routers. That's where this tunnel is going to end up happening. First, we're going to set up the phase 1 tunnel between the two routers. Then we're going to wrap that with a phase 2 tunnel, allowing us to send our data through the phase 2. Data now flows th freely through it. Nobody's going to be able to see the contents, and when we're done, we're going to tear down that session. There's other types of VPNs out there besides IPsec. IPsec is by far the most common when we're doing site-to-site -site or client-to-site. -site. But we do use some of these other, these other forms of VPNs as well in uh, some of the older devices. Uh, SSL and TLS are both used for websites. So with SSL, it's secure socket layer. We're going to provide cryptography and reliability for upper layers, layers 5 through 7 of the OSI model. SSL has been pretty much replaced by TLS and current networks, and it's used mostly for HTTPS web browsing. So if you go to Amazon to go purchase a book, and you go to their secure site, you're using SSL or TLS. L2TP is our Layer 2 tunneling protocol. It lacks security features like encryption. It was a very early form of VPN, but you can actually still use it with a secure VPN if you combine it with other things to give you that encryption. Layer 2 forwarding was developed by Cisco and provided tunneling of PPP traffic. Uh, again, it lacks native security features like L2TP. For that reason, you probably will not see either of those on your exam because they're not popular in today's networks. PPTP is point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. Again, it's another older protocol that supported dial-up networks. Uh, it lacks native security features, but Windows, even though it would use PPP, would actually add those features in their implementation to provide those, those type of uh, security features like encryption. And finally, we have TLS, which has pretty much replaced SSL at this point, the secure socket layer. Uh, if you're using an HTTP website, you're probably using TLS. And if you remember, your port number for that is 443, uh, port number 443 for your HTTPS web browsing. And that is VPNs and IPsec.